Hello everybody and thanks for watching. We are here with the co-editors together with me. I'm Lino Camprubi. We are at the University of Sevilla and we are here to present this book that just came out with, with Springer, Synthes, Contemporary Materialism, Its Ontology and Epistemology. Synthes is, let's say, one of our favorite publishers in philosophy, so we are, I must say, very proud of this <laughs> of this accomplishment, and we think that this book may have something to say in current debates on ontology and epistemology and metaphysics in general, um, from the point of view of philosophical materialism or of materialism in philosophy. To many people, materialism may sound as something out of date, but our goal, one of our goals, is to vindicate it for contemporary philosophy. So, together with me are the other two co-editors, Javier Perez Jara, he is uh, assistant professor at Beijing Foreign Studies University and faculty fellow at the Yale Center for Cultural Sociology, and Gustavo Esteban Romero, who is a professor of physics and philosophy at University of La Plata, and he's also the head of the Argentinian National Radio Observatory. So what do we do in this volume? We are the editors, together with us there are about 10 more authors who we thank from here, and they are experts in different fields of philosophy, they come from different disciplines of specialty, and uh, so they write about different aspects of materialism in philosophy. The first chapter of the book is a historical chapter which we have, the three of us, have co-authored. And it's very long, it's about 80 pages long, but it's also very short uh, if we take into account that it attempts to encompass the whole history of Western philosophy from Greek pre-Socratics to basically the present. Mm, how do we dare to do that? Well, because we are not attempting a, a very detailed and historical history, let's say, but a philosophical history that tries to trace the changing concepts of matter and materialism in the Western tradition of philosophy. And this takes us to sometimes surprising places, including mm, Platonism, Christianity, German idealism, we think that the, the concept of matter is richer than it's sometimes implied by the most body-centered assumptions. And the concept of matter that we trace in the history of philosophy includes somehow relationships, connections with what has been called physical matter and also with the conceptual world. After that chapter, there are two chapters, by each by one of the editors, one on systemic, systemic materialism and one on discontinuous materialism. And you can, of course, have a look at the table of contents online in the Springer website, so I won't list all chapters, but just to give you a glimpse, we look at space-time, we look at quantum matters, we look at systematic materialism in biology, the problem, the basic central problem of mind and matter, we also have a chapter on the, uh, the ontological import of the history of science, chapters on mathematics, also on the material nature of software. One of the novelties, I think, or of the, uh, one of the interesting items of this book is that we have three chapters devoted to discussions, to, to controversies on particular topics, particular aspects, particular uh, interpretations of materialism. One of them is on the reference of mathematics. The other one is on emerging materialism and what does the notion of emergent, emergentism entail. And finally, the last chapter uh, is co-authored by Gra Graham Harman and Javier Perez Jara. And one of them, obviously Harman, uh, holds that materialism is false. And Javier Pérez Jara replies that materialism is not false. <laughs> so it's, it's a proper philosophical discussion. OK, so that said, I would like to introduce, the, the, to give the word, to give the floor to, to my two co-editors. First of all, Javier, could you please tell us something more about this uh, 
broad, broader encomp encompassing notion of materialism that we use in the book. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that this is a very interesting question because it's one of the central points of the book, which means to emphasize that there are more forms of materialisms beyond physicalism or the so-called new materialisms. Because if we pay attention, for instance, if we check the Stanford um, Encyclopedia of Philosophy or the Wikipedia or many, mm, I mean, there are so many references that are very well known about materialism, but according to all those places, physicalism is materialism and materialism is physicalism. Physicalism, as everybody knows, is a form of downward reductionism, which means that uh, everything is going to be, everything in the universe is going to be understood in terms of physical matter, which denies the qualitative novelty, for instance, of chemistry or biology or psychology or sociology or artificial um, systems and so on and so forth, because according to physicalism, all the realities of the universe could be explained in terms of physical processes, laws, realities, and so on um, and, and so forth. And we, we claim that physicalism is partially right and partially wrong. It's partially right because everything in the universe has a physical dimension, which means that there are no physical, I mean, there are no chemical systems, there are no families, governments, empires, philosophical systems, movies, there is nothing in the universe without a physical side. But there are many, many, many supra-physical realities, which means that, for instance, chemical systems or biological systems or sociocultural systems, they have qualitative novelties ca that cannot be reduced to physical uh, processes and so on um, and so forth. So one of our main theoretical enemies is this kind of vulgar uh, materialism or, or physicalism. So uh, we, we defend an inclusive materialism, which means that it includes realities such as mental processes in terms, obviously, uh, of m m brain activity and so on and so forth, and uh, conceptual theoretical systems and so on and so forth, but also without hypostatizing them. Uh, this form of materialism we claim in, in, in the book, um, though there are, there are different approaches, but mm, all the approaches, with the exception of, uh, of Harman, uh, are mm, conducted by authors who reject uh, physicalism. So uh, we claim that a form of materialism that follows uh, inclusive materialism, such as mm, mm, authors or philosophers uh, in the 20th century, such as uh, Sellars or Bunge or Gustavo Bueno and so on and so forth, although they are less known than other philosophers who claim that physical reality can explain uh, everything and so on and so forth, we claim that this form of materialism that we present in the book is more compatible with modern science, with physics, with chemistry, with biology, but also with other sciences, uh, sociology, and also with bio, so biosocial sciences and so on um, um, and so forth. So uh, in order to present a non-reductionistic definition of materialism, we present a definition of materialism that has a negative side and a positive side. So from the point of view of the negative definition of materialism, we claim that materialism is the family of ontological, metaphysical uh, worldviews that denies the possibility and existence of disembodied minds, pure spirits, ghosts, uh, gods, things like that, um, but also denies platonic ideas. There are no concepts, there are no um, abstract realities without a very complex 
cognitive activity of an animal that uh, has a very complex nervous system and so on and, and so forth. So from the point of view of the negative definition of materialism that we present, materialism denies both spiritualism and objective idealism. But on the other hand, from the point of view of the positive definition of materialism, materialism claims that the ontos of ontology, the being, has to be identified with matter. And we claim that this is obviously very complex and the, and the book offers a lot of more details of, as you can understand. We claim that matter can be very generally understood in terms of mutability and plurality. And with plurality, I mean a very complex interplay of continuities and discontinuities. And with uh, mutability, I refer to uh, how matter changes, uh, how energy is a property of material system and not an entity, and so on and so forth. And we also claim that the negative de definition can be transformed into a positive definition and the positive definition into a negative definition, such as materialism identifies or denies that matter is immutable or matter uh, does, doesn't have any kind of parts or plurality like the God of Christianity and so on and so forth. So from this very general definition of materialism, we are just uh, going deeper into very complex macro-philosophical problems, such as Lino has mentioned some of, some of them, from the point, so from quantum matter to cosmological matter to the mind-body problem and so on and so forth. So now that we we have uh, today uh, here Gustavo Romero, who is a, a professional philosopher uh, and also uh, an expert in in, in astrophysics and, and and quantum physics, I would like to to ask him um, because one of the main ideas of the book is that philosophy, good philosophy, and not pseudo-philosophy, has to be supported on good science, because there is a uh, virtuous circle between science and philosophy. Every science has philosophical presuppositions, ontological presupp assumptions, epistemological assumptions, methodological assumptions, and on the other hand, every good philosophy has to be supported uh, good informed by good and updated science. So, uh, mm, Romero, how do you think that mm, the physics of 20th century, uh, specifically uh, quantum physics, how has this science changed our view of matter? And what are the main dangers of ignoring such scientific discoveries and theories? Okay, uh, thank you, Javier. Yes, um, in fact, I think that uh, science, in particular physics, is quite important for the development of the idea of matter. That can be observed in all major scientific revolutions, that there is always an impact of the uh, changes in, phys in our physical conception of the world into the, in the, in the conception of, of matter in philosophy. That can be uh, seen in, in the Newtonian revolution, also in the 19th century, with the introduction of thermodynamics and also with the electromagnetic theory, and in the 20th century uh, with the introduction of uh, the theory of relativity and uh, uh, the quantum mechanics. Uh, in particular, in our book, there are two chapters that are devoted to these theories and the impact they have in, in our views of matter. In one of these uh, chapters, we discuss whether uh, space-time is material. Space-time appears as an entity in general relativity, and in that chapter, we uh, review a number of arguments for the materiality of space-time. These arguments uh, go from um, considerations about the effect of the cosmological expansion of the universe on physical systems that show that space-time can act upon uh, matter, and also from considerations based on gravitational waves, uh, perturbations of space-time, and the energy of space-time. All, all this shows that uh, space-time has energy, space-time can 
produce changes in our equipments, in matcha, in the orbit of galaxies, and so on. So this strongly uh, changes our view of space-time from something that is merely a system of relations into a material system. And the implications for uh, materialism and philosophy are discussed in one of our, cha our chapters. The other chapter deals uh, with quantum mechanics, that perhaps is the greatest physical revolution of the 20th century. Quantum mechanics is a very precise theory, uh, but uh, the, this precise uh, and exact uh, formalism has um, a lot of backness in their interpretation. There is a, a plurality of interpretations of uh, quantum mechanics and endless uh, debates on how quantum mechanics should be interpreted. There are people that think that uh, quantum mechanics implies that there are um, observers everywhere or that the wave function is a physical thing or people that uh, maintains that uh, there are infinite worlds created at each instant of time uh, because of quantum measurements and many other things. In, in uh, our chapter in the book, we try uh, to shed some uh, light on these issues. This, we discuss the semantics of quantum mechanics. We discuss how the formalism should be supplemented by semantic actions. And uh, I try to um, outline uh, um, realistic uh, and uh, materialistic interpretation of uh, quantum mechanics that is consistent with the formalism. And that, uh, that interpretation also is non-local, uh, so we can interpret the different theorems of quantum mechanics in simple materialist terms. But the matter, the, the view of matter, the concept of matter that emerges from the theory is quite different from the concept of matter in classic physics. We, we should accept that. The world seems to be that way. And uh, then we go be beyond quantum mechanics. We go into the realm of quantum field theory. And uh, we discuss the ontology of the world in terms of, of fields. In my view, the world is uh, made up of uh, fields that uh, act upon space-time. So from this interaction between fields and space-time, what we call the world seems to emerge. And uh, what we call particles, things like muons, or quarks, or uh, electrons, these are just excitations of the corresponding quantum fields. So the, 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 the current image of the world seems to be a world of fields that are excited, and these ex excitations are, are what we call the particles. And all this occurs uh, in space-time. So w what is the origin of all this? We, we do not know, of course. There, there are two great uh, lines of research in this sense. There are those who try to uh, obtain the fields from space-time. This is the program of supersubstantivalism. And uh, then you have those that try to reduce space-time to the fields. Uh, perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps an option, uh, an alternative to these this, this two approaches might be that both space-time and the fields could emerge from some uh, basic ontological substratum. Substratum. Uh, that is uh, a possibility that is being nowadays investigated by a number of research programs, including uh, quant uh, quantum loop gravity, um, causal set theory, and other approaches that are very briefly mentioned in, in our book. Thank you. Wonderful. So thank you very much, <laughs> both of you, for, for your words presenting the book. We, of course, would like to close this presentation inviting you to delve uh, deeper into, into uh, the arguments that we present and engage with them, discuss them. You can get the book online, you can get it uh, as, as paper copy, you can do whatever you want. So with this advertising note, <laughs> I would like to thank the authors again, thank the editors, and thank you for watching. And yeah, goodbye. Thanks.